Like the GA is unbelievable for giving you crazy sort of storylines. Sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're, they're negative. But like sometimes they're just absolutely kind of... Unbelievable? Yeah, like headline grabbing. And the Dantrum final this weekend is the best, like it's some place to start. Now first of all, you have to think of the context that these two teams had to had to play the Antrim semi-final a couple of times because Love Jarrig and um, they had a they're up against Carrigan this weekend, but only after beating uh, Port Clonone after a replay. So or it's actually a second replay. Yeah. So the the replay went to extra time, was going to a shootout, then at nine all the German stepped in, and he ordered another replay. So one of the guys that's going to appear in goals for Love Jarrig is incredible. Yeah, He's, it doesn't uh, matter. He's the Lord Mayor of Belfast. His name is John Finucane. Like we've heard of like uh, secretaries and chairmen even playing matches and stuff like this, but this is a bit unprecedented. Yeah, a Lord Mayor. So he's obviously going to take off his little... Uh, or not. Bit. Or not. Maybe not. This is a medallion. <laughs> bit like an exhibit or one of them boys back in the day. Um, but you I, just see him coming in like starting a match. It's almost like a, a wrestler taking off all his garb just before the match <laughs> starts. Uh, there was a quote from him in, uh, in one of the newspapers up in Ulster saying, I'll make sure the diary is clear for Sunday, the, uh, the day after the game. But anyway, just to take it on another level, the context it is, so John Finucane, he's the son of Pat Finucane. So, I mean, this was a huge story back in 1989. And I'll just read out something that I saw in the Times newspaper explaining the context uh, when he was uh, made Lord Mayor back in May. In 1989... Pat Finucane, who was 39, was shot dead by loyalists at his home in North Belfast in front of his wife Geraldine, who was also injured, and their children Michael, Catherine and John. A review carried out by lawyer Sir Desmond de Silva QC confirmed agents of the state were involved in the murder and that it should be, have been prevented. Former Prime Minister David Cameron acknowledged shocking levels of collusion and issued an apology, but reneged on a previous administration's commitment to hold a public inquiry into the killing. The Finucan family are pursuing an inquiry through the courts. It really is quite incredible. Yeah. I mean, obviously the story in itself is incredible, but then throw that into a county final as well. You know, it is a day of families. Unbelievable! Day That's what it's all together. about. It's all, it's for where you're from. It's all your families. All these families coming together, and I'm sure, I'm sure uh, the Law of Darig Club would have come together unbelievably um, united for when that happened. Like, because it's a. It's not a tragedy, I don't know what it is, it's just awful really. Yeah. And they would have come together and would have helped the Finucane family. And now John is playing in goals in the county final as captain. It's it's mad situation really. Yeah, yeah, so we'll keep an eye on that and we'll chat about it more next week. There's a, there's plenty of county finals on this weekend, semi-finals and quarter-finals. So in Monaghan you have the, the senior football championship semi-final. Bally Bay against Scotstown have won plenty of titles in recent times. Bally yeah. Bay, of course, the, the Wileys are on that team. Couple of excellent players. The other semi final, Clan Tibbert, I mean, goes without saying, Conor McManus, unbelievable player. Yeah, he's Ashley's not. unreal, yeah, fair enough. Like, particularly when you know when you know he's going to be double marked in every game. I, I have never seen, never been at a, a Monaghan senior football championship match with, that he's been involved in, but imagine the special attention he gets. And I'm sure wherever he's playing, there's two to three, at least two to three opposition defenders around him as yeah. well. So for him to even be at that stage is fair all gone. Yeah, and I remember being out at the International Rules Series in Australia in 2014, and he had showed up a bit late himself, and was a Chrissy McCaig that had been involved in an Ulster Club Championship game, um, Schlock Neil against, uh, against uh, Clan Tibbert. They both got the playing out together, even though only one of them came out uh, <laughs> after winning the game. And I was watching him in the, I think it was Patterson Stadium was the name of the place, and he just came out, and they're a slightly different ball. I actually have, I took one from the tour, it's somewhere in the room there, and um, size four. He was just blasting it over from all angles. You know, he was just off the plane. Yeah. McManus blasting over from everywhere. Do you remember the point he got uh, against Tyrone? Tyrone sideline. On the wrong side. Yeah. It was outrageous, yeah, in fairness. Uh, capable of doing anything with the ball in his hands. But the, they're against Latin um, in the semi-final in Castlevania this weekend. And Latin, of course, is the club that has uh, Thomas Connolly on it. And I think people might remember from three or four years ago, he, of course, got a two-year ban for, um, for illegal substances. And... Um, I was kind of inquiring a little bit, you know, would he have made a comeback? He's actually joint captain of the club going into a county semi-final, which is, I'm sure it was a tough time for him. Um, I don't think he's ever spoken on the record, so I'm not really sure necessarily. No, I don't you know, think he has, no, side, I don't think so. he has, no. Of course, there's two sides to this story, so uh, it would be interesting to get that at some point. Um, so Latin made a, they were a bit all over the show, apparently, made a managerial change, and they're apparently flying now. Aidan Farmer, he's the manager. 
he captained them to the, the 2011 title. So I can't uh, imagine what that would have been like up around home and anything mm. like that when that all, when that all broke. Like and you're at the center of the storm and probably like a fella that wasn't that well known by a lot of people probably and then isn't all of a sudden his name was mm. everywhere. Um, but uh, good to see that he's that he's that he's bounced back and obviously they have a great chance of getting to a county final. Yeah. Uh, clear semi-finals are on this weekend and the, the thing that stood out from this though it's Milltown against Doonbeg and Kilmurray against Cratlow Cratlow looking for the double of course yeah. which I don't know that would really drain your players but um, for it drains your players as I said to you before until you lose a game if you're winning games it's great when you lose a game the manager comes out and says ah just just got the better of us or whatever yeah. too much too many games too long and then, but when you're winning but when you're winning it's great as long as uh, people don't get injured yeah. it's great football is a different is different demands on lads that are predominantly playing hurling should we say mm-hmm. or playing hurling more like you'd be sore after a football match for a week a hurling match you wouldn't be a couple of days football is literally end to end to end and the hits are just on a different level mm. Jerome O'Connell did a tweet a couple of weeks ago about uh, about the Clare situation he goes former Limerick footballer Killian Fair P-H-A-I-R, I think that's how it's pronounced, edging closer to a senior football title in a fourth county as Cratlow reached the semi-finals. He won the Cavan title with Cavan Gales, London title with St. Brendan's, and won the Limerick title with Drum Broadford. I've yeah. only got one thing to say on that. What? That's not fair. Journeyman. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great headline. Yeah, the headline yeah, yeah. is there for someone, like, in fairness. So he's played for both Limerick and London, the Cavan man. So yeah. That's, that's fair going. It's right. savage, in fairness, yeah. I remember uh, one of my old teachers telling me that he played three county finals in three different counties in the one year under three different names. Wow, <laughs> that is some going. Yeah, it's Kratow looking for a fourth final uh, this decade. They won in 2013 and 14, lost in 2016. Uh, Derek Lynch had tweeted, Kilmurray's win over Kilmahill in the semi-final, or sorry, quarter-final, means they'll finish the decade having reached at least four of the finals and uh, four of the Clare finals every year bar two, 2013 and 15. And yeah, um, Kilmurray of Brecon, they had seven of the last nine points in their win. Uh, uh, Clare is unbelievably competitive when you think yeah. about it. You've got Kilmurray and Brecon who have been to Munster finals. You've got Law who have been to Munster finals in this decade. You have Milltown Malbe mm. who were they in the Munster final last year? I think the, the clear is I think they might have been actually. Um, so you have an unbelievable, like they've only small pockets but they're really, really competitive and it's a really, really tough championship to get out of by all accounts. Yeah, I'm just looking at the, the championship from last year. Yeah, you're right. They were in the, the final last year against Doctor. Yeah, the, clear, the two Clearies would have been playing yeah, for them. Yeah, didn't, didn't go their way. Owen Brennan was tweeting about the Milltown uh, against Doonbeg, and he said Doonbeg secured their um, their semi final win with a dramatic uh, couple of injury time goals to overturn Airog after extra time, and it's their first final in six years. Semi final. Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah. first semi final in six years. Actually, interesting. Um, Dean Ryan. I'm not sure if he does any more of Airog going out with Emer Considine. On the Irish rugby team, unlucky lads. Tongan <laughs> Hacker. <laughs> anyway, there you go. So that's the that's the clear semi finals. The Longford final this weekend. Now this is a, a week after the intermediate title was won by Father Men and Gales, of course. Mm. But anyway, Longford Slashers against Kilo Emmett. So it's their first meeting in the final since 2012, and with Mullen out, it's a fair chance for for Kilo to get yeah. back in and win a title. Because both both Kilo and Mullen and I think Slashers as well, they have three titles each this decade, so whoever wins this will be top. Um, Mullen Nocta are top. As far as you're concerned, because they won the Leicester, Leicester yeah, title. Beating Kilmacud along the way, yeah. which is no mean feat to beat a Dublin team for a country yeah. for a countryside. Um, so some of the key players then for... Um, for uh, Kilo. Kilo, yeah, would be obviously... Everyone's going to say Mickey Quinn straight away. Mm. He's a player that stands out. The McCormick brothers as well, uh, Sean and Park. On the other side, then, you'd have Dermot Brady, Barry Gillern, Andrew Dalton, uh, Peter Foy, Robbie Clark. Peter Lynn would be another big one as well. Dermot Brady, that retired in the last... Did he retire in the last year? From the last cor- couple of years. Cornerback, yeah. yeah absolute yeah. stalwart of a defender, yeah. yeah. Uh, there are four Clark brothers uh, starting for the Slashers here. Connor, Sean, Robbie and Rory. And uh, this guy Rory Ga- Gallery tweeted in saying, it sounds like they need to be split in two with my family. <laughs> And Daniel Monk said, and it's an effing madhouse there. So uh, I there's, asked There's some great ones like, um, I, I don't know, my, my brother's involved in, uh, in dairy cows and things over in New Zealand. Dairy cows? Dairy cows, yeah. So when you're, when you're trying to get a, a cow in calf, basically, it's done through AI. But the percentage is, they want heifers mm-hmm. so that you're going to have another cow. Yeah. They don't want 
bollocks yes. because they're of no use to them really because they can't milk them or anything like they're, they're of no value to them really so they inject a certain type of semen to try and increase the percentages so I, of getting a heifer so I always thought like, if you're a big mad GA family is, are there any ways of like increasing the chances of having more lads so that you can have like half a GA team or something like that <laughs> oh it's like a king always wants to have a son so he's got an exactly yeah like, exactly yeah plenty of good uh, good young uh, women playing GA this way Oh no, I I I, no, I don't disagree with yeah, you. Not <laughs> yeah, you know, um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, did you ever hear of the term shemiki? So no. this is where, right? And this is one I've heard down home, and it's even mentioned uh, in a book by Don Ryan as well. They've kind of exploded in the last uh, number of years, but it's this phenomenon whereby a man who wants to have sons to kind of continue his legacy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He wants to have sons, and all he has is daughters. So if he just has daughters only, it's referred to as a she-making. So <laughs> hey, don't judge, judge us. That's just something that people say down the way. Um, but what about brothers playing together in a county final? Where have we seen the most? I threw it out there on Twitter. and The Dooleys in Clarion would have been the one that would immediately come back to me. Uh, there was four, there would have been four of them. Johnny, Joe, Billy and, uh, and uh, another brother, Kieran, and the Wheelitons in Burr, obviously, because they yeah. were close to me. But there's that's a case of three or four, whereas like there are cases of a bit more than three or four. Yeah, I'll run through some of them. Pam Arcee, he tweeted in saying, Five Sullivans in Cork in uh, the late 2000s. I think this was in Cloyne. Yeah, Clying Dermot Owen, Colin Donnell and Potty. The Rock and Pebbles. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> nickname. Actually, we must do that as well. Great GA yeah. nicknames. Um, GA Picks said there was five means from Caltra and Galway, all starters. Brian Flanagan, uh, was, um, who's the sports editor of the Star, the six Keeley brothers played for Don Shocklin. Yeah, they had six months of field when they won the county yeah. final in 2000. Colin Garvey, there's a queer load of Fitzhenry. Queer load of Fitzhenry. <laughs> Uh, on the Duffery Rovers team at one stage when they were winning county finals and Barry Cleary added in that um, Barry Cleary he, went and done a bit of research here for us now in yeah, fairness yeah, yeah. He's, he's just so Duffery Rovers and he did a quote from an article in October 91 they made sporting history in Wexford by becoming the first team to win six county championships beating Glyn Bar Barrentown 2-6-5 and there was six Fitzhenry. That's savage. Yeah. Uh, Niall McCoy, Kiku will have five start in the down final with the Brannigans. Be the first time for them. Twice four have started with Eugene coming off the bench. Um, Michal McGill, six McGovern brothers for Burren, who Kiku beat along the way this year. Uh, Cahill Creamer, uh, the, the Dowlers of Moidow Harpers, also in Longford, had six or seven that played in, the, in a junior final in the Brilliant. 1980s. Uh, both Stephen Bambrick and Kieran Doyle started talking about the Fenleys. So they had... Um, was seven oh, tennis. yeah, sure, back in the day, yeah, yeah. It'll be hard to beat that. Yeah, fairness, like Mister, seven, yeah, magnificent yeah. seven. The, the Fenley old lad there must have been kind of <laughs> marching up and down the sideline thinking I'm some See, the thing is, it's less likely to happen now just because families in general are a lot smaller now. There's less likely to be six or seven yeah. in 20 or 30 years time. 2.4 sons is about the most you might have out in the field at any one time. 2.4? Yeah, you know the way they say oh, family, yeah, nuclear yeah. family, yeah. 2.4 kids. Uh, Fintan O'Toole from the 42, he said five Burke brothers when St. Thomas has won their title in Switch, 2012 yeah. and another one came on. Stephen O'Connell, um, who's brother of Darrell O'Connell who plays for uh, Dublin, uh, he was talking about Bally Duff, that the Boyles, Liam, Mikey, Kenneth, Aidan, Cullum and their father, Liam Senior, played in goals. All mm -hmm. And of course with the Burks, the father would have been over the team as well, John yeah, Burke as well, which makes it even better. Uh, Gordon Manning of the Irish Sun, six Bennis brothers for the well in 1965. Lorraine McIntyre, five uh, Dooley brothers for Sheer Kieran. Oh, there would have been Seamus as well, my apologies, yeah, yeah. Seamus and Kieran. Uh, Mert, Mert Ryan was having a few digs at me about how great Tumi Vara used to be as a first <laughs> Lee man. Five uh, Duns for Tum in the county final around 03 or 04. Brian Beery and Charlie Keane, four banners on the Cashley King Cormac's teams of the mm -hmm. early 90s. Like, they got to an All-Ireland final, and then I think it was 25 years after they go and get relegated from senior. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Um, Rhino Dwyer, of course, would have been moved to Dublin as well. would have been a big loss. And I think he either won a county title or a sevens All-Ireland the same day as they got relegated from the senior, his, his, his home club. Uh, Morgan O'Callaghan, who was involved with the Kildare um, county team before, he said, John, Colm, Ronan, Chris and Damien would have all started one final anyway, and probably a few more around the late 2000s, or late 90s, early 2000s. John Darmody um, from Ballyhale, four reads started for Ballyhale in one final. Uh, Paul Fitzpatrick now. Paddy Owen, TJ and Richie, yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. Paul Fitzpatrick sent in a good one. Uh, Bally Galgett entered the Kilmacud uh, Sevens in 1970. Oh, brilliant. With a nine-man squad considering, consisting of seven McGrattan brothers who were Porrick, Liam, Seamus, Eamon, Kevin, Grode and Aidan, all sons of the secretary, Podrick. 
and two of their cousins, Eamon and Sean McGrattan, they were... Keep it in the family. <laughs> That's the job, yeah. We don't need anyone else, lads. We're all right. We're going to have this one covered. And then Joe Seward, uh, he, said, he was on about the, the Sullivan family for Moore Abbey's Ladies Football uh, Club. Did four sisters line up in the county final. Kira, Diran, Maeve and Roisin, all four would have been on the Cork panel together too. And one year, they had uh, four, Moore and Abbey had four sets of sisters That's on deadly. the team. So... Uh, that's what it's all about. A couple of households is all you need. Realistically, yeah. like a couple of households is all you need if there's three or four in each. The Donegal Football Championship is uh, back in harness this weekend. Uh, Guidor against Kilcar and St. Eunan's against Nave Connell. So Guidor, obviously Ulster champions and uh, Kilcar. Paddy McBrearty. That should Steve be a McBrearty. belter of a game. Yeah. Semi-final now. Fair enough. Unions are very impressive last weekend now, but that's that's the standout, tell you. That should be an absolute yeah. belter, like, in fairness. Be very hard to keep into Ray McHugh in a club game, wouldn't it? Would be. Ah, jeez, it would, yeah. But Guido are probably one of the yeah. clubs that would be able to. Like, they have serious riches all over the field, in fairness. Yeah. Um, the Carlo final is on this weekend. Air Ogre against Palatine. The uh, the Armagh semi-finals, Bally McNabb, I should say, against Gray and Moore, and Cross McGlenn against Mahary. Jeez, it was a time when I'd say everyone in Ulster just detested Cross McGlenn. Yeah. Would not stop <laughs> uh, London semi-finals are on this weekend. So Fulham against Nays and Gale. And of course this links back to Cross McGlenn. Because Jamie Clark has been playing with Nays and Gale. Right, yeah. Not to mention Quaylon Mooney, mm. who's the down midfielder. Absolutely brilliant player. Um, so you can imagine them ripping it up in club championship. Oh, Mulligan is over the Irish, I think, isn't he? Is he? Oh yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. think he is actually. Yeah, so, we have so like one Mulligan against Jamie Clark. Yeah, there's a fair kind of uh, Ulster element to that now, isn't yeah. there? Fairness. And then Tyr Cardinal Gales against St Kieran. So if there's any stuff that uh, that's worth letting us know about the the London semi-finals or the final, actually, once we're heading into that, do let us know. Uh, the Derry semi-finals: Banagher against O'Donovan Rossa and Schlock Neil against uh, Glen. Everyone be expecting Schlock Neil to have the football title. To yeah, of course, they would have had a, I'd say they had a fair uh, scoop of points after last Sunday now, but they'll be back on the horse well at this stage now. And there's so many, so much of a crossover of bodies, it's, a, there's no, it's not just a couple of lads, they'd all be in it together, like, mm. and I'm sure winning the football, while winning seven row in the hurling was a massive priority, getting back the football title would be huge for them. Where do you think they're more likely to win in All-Ireland, football or hurling? Well, they're more likely... To get to an All Ireland semi final in the hurling, coming out of Ulster is going to be very tough in the football. You could have Cross McLean, you could have either Guido or Kilcar, you could have who else could you have? Did I say Schlockney? Or sorry, yeah, I meant we're talking about Schlockney. Um, you could have Kilku. Yeah. You know, very difficult. Uh, like you could get really, you could get an awful quarter final in Ulster. I don't know the draw, but you could get a terrible draw. Plus, we'll see how condensed or otherwise it is this year compared to last year with the change in the fixtures. Yeah, true. Yeah. It's now like it's going to be finished by January the nineteenth, and of course, if they get to both, you, you couldn't ask them to play on the same no, day. No, of course not. No. And even no. if you asked them to play one week after the next, well, anyway. Well, I wouldn't put past that. I wouldn't yeah. put, I wouldn't put yeah. past the fixture makers. Um, the Carf or Carfinner against Salt Hill and Nakara in the Galway Championship this weekend, forty-two games unbeaten, and it's hard to see them not kicking on here. Uh, Mike Cullen against Tum Stars, and the other one, Tum Stars, are the record title winners. So Mike Cullen getting to a senior semi-final is a fair achievement. Like mm -hmm. they they were intermediate for a good while, and uh, they haven't. I don't think they've been in around those kind of knockout stages in the last couple of years. So it's a fair achievement. Um, the Kerry round uh, three of the championship. St. Brendan's against Shannon Rangers, East Kerry against Cairns O'Reilly's, Ken Mayer against West Kerry and Kilcommon versus Kieran. so they're all trying to get into the quarterfinals. Kildare semi-finals this weekend, Selbridge against Sarsfields, two big enough, uh, big enough clubs there. Of Definitely, from what I understand as well, uh, Davey Burke, the new Wicklow manager, he's obviously the Sarsfields manager, but I believe he was, he was approached by Selbridge as well and kind of almost thought it was m more of a challenge to be with Sarsfield. <laughs> Sarsfield. I, I actually saw him out with his team in Abbottstown at the weekend, so obviously putting in serious... He's an amazing, team. amazing kind of story as well, like to be fair, he's, thir he's 31, he's 31, going to be an inter-county manager, he's already managed an All-Ireland under-20 winning team as well. Seems to be a lad with a serious amount of ambition. Now, oh, definitely, serious that amount is of the ambition. Worst. Wouldn't it remind you a little bit of when Jason Ryan took over Wexford? Was yeah. He, was he 31 at that time? He was he very young anyway, 30 yeah. 31, Barely so. finished, just, yeah. just finished, like, yeah. I wonder what the youngest um, county manager is. Uh, Emmett MacDonald was very young when he was over Offaly, like mid thirties. But I wasn't he over that Eden Derry school? Yeah, that, he was that over St Mary's that won the All Ireland. Yeah, mm. Davy Burke's not far off being the youngest. I'd say, yeah. to be honest with you. Just let us know if if you can think of a manager any younger than thirty one yeah. with Davy Burke and, and of course Jason Ryan. The Mayo semi finals this weekend. Ballon Tubber um, they're against Ballina, who of course shocked Bravey, mm. and uh, they're up against the O'Connors of Ballon Tubber, who've won the title in the past. 
Balladreen, Andy Moran's club, they're up against Castlebar, Mitchell's the juggernaut. It's going to be hard to stop, yeah, aren't they? Um, and do you think Castlebar, like Castlebar seem to, in a microcosm, sum up Mayo in a sense, getting to these All Ireland finals? Really would have fancied beating Belly Bowden a couple of years ago. Definitely, yeah. And that was the one, really, yeah. It wasn't that they just left it behind them. They just didn't show up at all. No, they never showed yeah. up on the day at all, yeah. But, like, yeah, so hard so hard to, to stop a team like that within a county. Like, Ballon Tubber did farewell to, to, yeah. to win a county title last year. But uh, I'd imagine Castlebar are on a kind of retrieval mission this year. What about the Wicklow semi-final replay? Blessington and Arclow, Geraldine's Bally money to give them their full title. So, the, as, we, as we know, last week... The game went to a shootout, yeah. and again, a club chairman said, <laughs> yeah. "No mass, no more of this." Um, so they're out again this weekend. When Pat's <coughs> waiting, the winners, of course, they're gonna, yeah. it's, they're gonna, they're gonna have a tough either, and we're gonna have a tough no matter who comes through. Yep, Sligo semi-finals this weekend. Uh, Cooler Strand Hill against St Mary's, and Tourist Strand against Shamrock Gales. By the way, have you ever been out in Strand Hill? It's one of the most picturesque. No, I never have been actually. No, no, Sligo. I've, dri- I've driven through Sligo a few times. It's an unbelievable county. Mm. Yeah, it's a class county. I stayed out in. Um, in it's just like a CD story coming no, around the no, way. No, I'm only going to give the overview, but I say it in Strand Hill in Keen Egan of Westlife's house. Oh, lovely. Okay. I won't go into the story, okay. but I actually okay. did. Uh, the Watford uh, for that'll be an outtake. <laughs> <laughs> the Watford semi finals ran this weekend. Rack Gormick against Strad Bally and Balnacorti against the Nair. So if you ended up with a Strad Bally against the Nair final, you'd have the brick against Jamie Barron. Yeah, the brick against the block. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like, as we've talked about the brick before, like, he is the man for every season, like, mm. and you kind of when Waterford are gone, it's gone quiet, and then you always hear his name start to be mentioned again around yeah. October, November when <laughs> Stradbally go on a run in the football. He's a phenomenal man. He'll never retire, will he? I don't think so. No, yeah. I think he might retire from from Waterford, but he'll never retire. Retire. He'll always be playing. He'll always be playing for Stradbally. I saw a tweet from um, UCD coming out saying uh, UCC, I should say, all GAA activity for Thursday, October the third, is cancelled due to impending bad weather. And they showed the picture and it seemed to be kind of covered in frost, uh, they tweeted out. So you just wonder, are any of these games going to be called off this weekend? I mean, as we talk, the weather isn't too bad, it's drizzling a little bit, but we'll see what happens. You just don't, you just don't know, it's some, someone called it Storm Luigi to me this morning. <laughs> but um, you just don't know what sort of effects it's going to have, in certain areas in particular. Like Some places are going to be worse than others, mm-hmm. particularly places on the coast. Anything that's not like nailed, nailed, nailed down could end up flying anywhere and you just mm. you just don't know they could be dressing rooms that get serious pattern this weekend it's it's tough yeah a lot a lot of clubs are probably going to be hit now this weekend mm. and think of even the pier shake at the hurling club a few weeks back Sturf pitch was flooded yeah there was other other uh, teams facilities and just to mention of course for leash uh, the semi-final replay um <sighs> just happened there during the week bally finn 110 kileshin 17 points the 2011 Celebrity Banish Door winners I saw Willow Cat. Oh, very so, good. Uh, so they're up against um, Port Leash in the final. And Stephen Bambrick was tweeted, for the first time, Collection lads will be bringing the Puma Kings instead of the drums and accordions to the county final. Fair play. Uh, just to kind of give a bit more context with that, Killian Whelan was tweeting that uh, our pipe band played at many county finals over the years, but now Collection footballers finally get to grace the big day in Leash. We won't worry about the task ahead, Port Leash cough, he says but we'll enjoy a moment in history. So that's a great day for Kalesha. That's br- brilliant, yeah. There's a good story actually about the journalist Pat Nolan, who works at the Mirror. Uh, he played in the he played in the pipe band, uh, I don't know what the name of the pipe band was, before an Offaly County final, and played the, uh, what does he play? He plays the bagpipes, is it the bagpipes he plays? Ellen Pipes? Ellen Pipes, yeah. sorry, yeah, Ellen Pipes. And he played the Ellen Pipes or whatever, and then he scooted it up to the stand and reported on the, on the man, the man, the <laughs> match after, yeah. See, that's GA. We started yeah. with the most quintessential sort of GA this colourful tapestry that there is that all sorts happen and we finish with it too. So that's it for the Club Talk Football this week. Let us know if there are any stories we missed out and don't forget to follow us by clicking on that button just there.